Okay, um, our next speaker is Dr. Jong Bak from UNIST. And Dr. Bak, you may start whenever you're ready. Oh, good. Okay, so I'll be brief. So it's about 10,000 Korean Genome uh, Project. I'm in Kojik, Korean Genome uh, uh, Center. is a Korean Genomics Industrialization and Co uh, Commercialization Center at UNIST, Ulsan. Mm, it's, in, uh, it's near Busan. So we have lots of computers, uh, and a sequencer, and we do a lot of genome sequencing analysis. So this is about COVID-19. So I, I shared my paper on Tempris-2. Tempris-2 is an enzyme which is necessary to process the viral uh, enzyme and uh, AC2 when, when they interact. So when uh, COVID-19 virus uh, attaches itself, the S protein attaches to AC2, it needs to be clipped. And Tempris-2 does the clipping. So Tempris-2 mutation can affect the infectivity of the virus. So if you look at this, what happens is East Asians have variations, B2M at 197 position and G G8V. And these two positions actually affect the uh, CFR case fatality rate, which means East Asians are more resistant. Essentially, I have more resistance uh, uh, than uh, a Caucasian person from England or Germany. And interestingly, Finnish people have actually high uh, uh, this uh, mutation rate, uh, about the same as Koreans. Anyway, so we found a statistically significant uh, correlation between the mutation rate and the resistance. What this means is that we think in the past 20, I don't know, 10,000 years ago, in East Asia, there have been many co coronavirus pandemic. So Koreans, have been selected. Uh, Chinese, Japanese, and Koreans have been selected uh, against this. So this shows uh, you know, some uh, power of genomic uh, you know, association study of the you know, variation of, of, of the virus. So that's a paper. Uh, that was the original topic. And uh, so I'm actually changing the topic a little bit. So I'd like to introduce 10,000 Korean genomes because I find that's more relevant to you all. So the aim of Genome Korea, 10,000 Korean Genome, actually I'm trying to sequence everybody in Korea, 50, 50 million people in the future, in the next you know, 15 years, that's my aim. And one of the first steps is to do 10,000 genomes and it's to map, uh, map the diversity of Korean population. So this is the history of Korean Genome Project. Uh, actually the Korean Genome Project started uh, when I was at COVID and I moved to UNIST in 2014 and we started the project in 15, and we had a milestone uh, last year, 1,000 Korean genomes were published in Science Advances, and we are working on uh, 10,000 Korean genomes right now. Um, so we hope to publish it uh, next year. And in the meantime, we have a new project called BioData Farm. What it, what, what it means, we, we acquired about $10 million uh, computing facility uh, this year. So we are going to analyze in depth the Korean genomes the variations of Koreans. So this is a pipeline. Um, we, of course, typically work on uh, SMPs, indels, HLA typing information, transposable element, TE, copy number variations, structural variations. So these are the typical variation types. And we have clinical information of the, of the people, 10,000 people in Korea. So Korean population is very homogeneous, extremely so. Uh, so we have this very well documented, hundreds of clinical information uh, for 100, 000, uh, 10,000 people. And one of the first uh, findings is that Koreans are homogeneous. However, still, even with 1,000 genomes or even 10,000 genomes, we still find rare variations. It means we have to sequence a lot more to find all the variations. We'll never reach you know, perfect uh, you know, zero variation state. However, still, we need a lot of uh, this many genomes to cover all the uh, population variations. So we discovered 40 million new variants. They, are, they, were, not, they were never reported before uh, in the 1,000 Korean genome set. Now we're working on uh, 10,000 genomes and now, so we'll discover even more. And this is a, a variant classes uh, we found. Uh, there's a, you know, more variation, of course, in the genic region, interim region, five prime, three prime flanking, UTR, and so on and so forth. So this is the statistics. So if you look at the positions Korean populations occupy uh, is here. So Koreans, uh, you know, uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, African and European. And if you look at in detail, East Asians only, 
So these black dots are Koreans. As you see, Koreans form a one a clave, big clave. You know, there's some sort of in between, uh, uh, you know, this link, uh, some of them Koreans, and these are Japanese, and these are Chinese. Chinese, of course, has higher variation. So we have is more diverse in their Vietnamese, Chinese, and so on. So still Koreans occupy one uh, single clade, and which means it's unique enough. And this is known already, and uh, we found uh, 35 drug uh, related some variants. Uh, so Koreans are homogeneous, very close to Japanese. However, we still have some unique variants. Uh, one typical type uh, of analysis on HLA, of course, shows that although we are very close to J the Japanese, we have uh, some uh, this immune related uh, HLA type, distinct types. So it means uh, pharmaceuticals do need consider uh, the variations when they develop drugs. And this is another uh, PCA plots uh, with the parameters of allele repeat lines and structural variation, it's called type SVA. So if you look at this, uh, just pure ALU repeat, Koreans are different from Japanese here. So ALU is the most fast, fastest changing uh, genetic element in our genome. So this is, these are Koreans, Japanese, and some Chinese and so on. So, so if you look at this overall picture, this is line one, the long inter, uh, interspersing uh, variation. This is much more overlapping with uh, the Japanese. And this SVA, you know, a bit more, but still, you know, forming a unique uh, clay here. And this is another one. Uh, I forget what this is exactly is anyway. So uh, China, uh, Koreans, Japanese, and Chinese, and so on. And one advantage of doing whole genome sequencing for mapping diversity is when you use the whole genome, you can identify better markers. So, uh, you know, usually markers are developed or discovered by chips. However, if you use the whole genome, you can discover higher uh, significance uh, markers. So we can actually new, we can find new uh, markers for diagnosis. Um, and also we can find totally new novel loci, which haven't been detected in the past uh, by chips, because chips can only uh, find surrogate markers, while with WGS, you can actually find the most accurate or low frequency markers here in this case. So we could find novel low frequency markers. So this is obvious, but we could find it. Another advantage of having this Korean whole genome sequences is that when you analyze the imputation, imp when you make an imputation panel, it's much more accurate. I would say much, sorry, it's, it's more accurate, okay? So using Korean 1K data with 1000 uh, genome uh, from UK, if you merge this together, then imputation quality goes up. Uh, this is useful for us. The, the last one, actually probably the most important thing is when you want to analyze cancer genomes, uh, even if you don't have the cancer germline gene of the patient, gene, genome of the patient, you can use the population-wide pan genome to subtract the normal somatic mutations so that you can identify only the cancer variations. Uh, so we published this and we also work, uh, worked on Korean work a barium which varium is the totality of the variations. And we also published this as a separate paper. And, and we also published COREF, Korean Reference Genome. So we are building the Korean Reference Genome. We have been doing this since COVID, uh, so almost now, I don't know, 20 years. Get big. So uh, we started in 2006 in COVID. Uh, we, are, we are still doing it. And uh, so that's going on. And we are now working on something called Biodata Farm. Uh, analyzing these 10,000 Korean genomes. Uh, this is Kojik. That's it. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Um, is there any question from audience who are listening to yeah, this? I have a question. Oh, Saito. Saito. Okay. Hi, John Hi. Uh Why you uh, treated are you or lying? separately in PCA analysis? I, I don't understand why you did it, not clear. Oh, so ALU is you know, shorter, about 300 base pair, while line is longer. So uh, we, you know, you know we, we wanted to have higher resolution because I, we know ALU is the most uh, you know, fastest uh, changing. So we wanted to have higher resolution. So not, 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 not any particular reason, but just we wanted to you know, have a more detailed one. 
Okay, um, any other question? Okay, if not, uh, thank you, Dr. Bob, again. It was a very good presentation.